can do it mentally. How many of you have been doing it mentally in your mind? Yeah. Helps, right? Now, you'll discover the more you do it, the better it is and the more effective it works. And eventually, you know, what I do is sometimes I just notice it. I take a deep breath. Peace. And it just goes away. It really releases it because the unconscious mind is so smart. It learns and knows how to make the changes. And so this last week definitely has been an opportunity for me. I did some tapping over the weekend several times. <laughs> it's part of the growth process, you realize that. The deal is you're going to tap for the rest of your life. And I want you to realize that is the deal. If you don't, now I will tell you this. And I've, I've seen many people come to this seminar. They get really big changes and their life really does change. But the tapping does not prevent events happening to you in the future. Say, for example, you know, you clean up whatever it is that's going on in your life currently, and then in the future you may lose your job, your, your dog may die, or, your, or some, something happens. And if you have a tendency to go back to the old way of coping with things, you can create more problems. You can create a whole new set of problems. But when you're creating all these problems, you can look back to whatever it is that you addressed in this seminar you'll notice it doesn't bother you because you change that. And what we want to do is, is develop this skill of addressing and releasing and letting go. That is the gift of a lifetime, and you need to really practice this. Because in the past, how did you deal with your stuff? I mean, seriously, how did you deal with it? You dealt with it. You put it right back here. You try to eat it. You try to drink it. You try to smoke it. You try to work it. You try to run from it. You try to do whatever it is. But the problem is it all goes with you wherever you go because where is it at? Right here. And you can't run fast enough. And you can't work hard enough. You, I mean, you just can't. Because what happens, you get to lay your head on a pillow. And then your mind starts rambling with all that stuff you've been running from because you hadn't developed the emotional intelligence or the internal process of letting go. You know, whenever you tap, the, the real deal is, is feel it. Notice what bothers you. Notice how you know. It could be the picture, it could be a sensation, it could be anything. Just notice it. You don't necessarily have to say anything. All you have to know is know how you know it bothers you. It could be a feeling in your stomach, it could be a feeling in your heart, it could be a heaviness on your shoulders. Feel it and then tap. You can, you know, the key is, is identifying. Now some of you, if you want to do it this way, even though I have this problem, whatever it is, this, I accept myself, even though I have this problem, I totally and completely accept myself. That problem, whatever it is, that feeling, whatever it is that you're doing, just let it go, let it go. <sighs> Peace. Then go back and check it again. If it was a strong emotion and you did it one time and it dropped from a 10 to a 5, do it again. Now, if you don't do it again, let's say it dropped from a 10 to a 5 and you definitely feel better. If you leave it at a 5 level, it will still remain a 5 level and then you'll experience something later on or you'll start to think about it again. And all of a sudden it's at that level. What you want to do is completely release it all the way down to zero. Now I use a protocol. I use a SUD unit. Now you usually don't have to do this for yourself, but you can. Like for example, you think of something and you feel it and you measure it. Zero, I can't feel it. Ten, really strong. It's a ten feeling. But if you're internally doing it yourself, you don't necessarily have to do that. Now, I use the SUD unit when I'm working with somebody so that I can understand that there's changes occurring. But you don't have to do that for yourself unless it's just something how you, you want to do it and that's how you think. But this is how I do it. SUD unit, subjective units of distress. Zero, I can't feel it. Ten, it's really strong. We want zero. In order to get zero, I use what I call a tote. Test, I feel it, it's a ten. Operate, tap. Now, there's a lot of ways of operating. You don't necessarily have to tap. There's lots of ways of making changes. Tapping, for me, is just one of the fastest ways. And then you test it. So it was a 10. You tap it. You test again, and it's a zero. Then you exit. I mean, it's all over with. Whoa. And then sometimes it's going to be test, operate, 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 and then you exit. It may take you 15, 20 minutes. If it takes you two hours... Hang in there. Do it until it's gone because there's one person who will benefit when you get to zero and that's definitely you. This is deep, deep internal changes and you want those changes. And then after you take this problem, whatever the problem is, 
One of the things that's real important, go back and make it positive. So it makes it make a feel good with it. If there's a memory and it's a bad memory, it makes you feel bad when you start and you start tapping, you're tapping all the way down to zero. Change the memory where it's a positive memory. Send love, send forgiveness, send something where it feels good. Because then your unconscious mind will use the positive. That's what you want to do. Now, in order to have a problem, I believe you've got to be good at having a problem. That means inside you, you have to do something to make it happen. So, for example, if you have an anger problem, I said, are you angry? I said, well, sure, I'm angry. I said, well, how do you know you're angry? Well, I have this reference right here. And so the reference is like a ladder to the problem. And each rung of the, the ladder represents an emotional aspect. You start tapping on this, this problem, whatever it is. You're using the tote until you get down to zero. And then when you get to zero, you can't have a problem this way because, first of all, it doesn't bother you anymore. And then I say, well, can you get this problem back? See if you can get angry again. And you said, well, of course I can. I drove my way over here and this guy pulled out in front of me. I'm really angry. I said, okay, how does it make you feel? You start to feel the emotions. You start tapping on the process, the emotions, get down to zero. Of course, now you have a different perspective. And then you just start trying to find every way to have a problem. And so now you can't have a problem because you have changed all your internal references. Okay. But that doesn't mean you, all, all your abilities to be angry is to, totally gone because you have plenty of references. There's a lot of roads to Rome, you know. And so... And since you have a lot of experiences, what you're going to do is you're going to go out in the world. Everything's a test so that you can clear it up and clean it up. So you may have something back here in the background. And as you do, I want you to just continuously working, healing, and releasing whatever the stress and emotions are. And, of course, say, for example, when I work with somebody and they have ten, uh, have two, five memories here. And all the memories basically have the same basic emotional driver. And each one of them, they go to it, and it feels like a 10. If any one separately, they go and feel it. But what I've noticed by working with individuals, as you start tapping on the emotions in one memory, the next memory, usually the emotions dissipate. They lessen. And each time you do this, and eventually it's real hard to have this problem. And uh, uh, definitely your world will begin to change. The tote is very powerful. The most important key about using this process is when you feel it, stop and feel it then tap it and release it then make sure it's completely gone this is the most powerful thing that you could do for the rest of your life when you feel disruption when you feel upset when you feel hurt don't run from it because if you run from it you take it with you but if you face it you feel it you tap it you release it you become free actually you gain personal power and control in order to get what you want it's important important to let go of what you don't want and that's and that is so important because whenever i have clients come in the first thing i say hey uh what do you want well i don't want this i don't want that i don't want this i definitely don't want this i said okay what would you like to have well you know i i would like to have this but i but this over here really bothers me and i don't want this and i don't want that and i don't want this what drives your bus is what you don't want and here's the craziest part. Now, I had a young girl today. Now, this is really, really amazing. And um, she's, um, she's really good at worrying. I mean, she's, she's an expert at worrying. Matter of fact, she said, this is what I do. This is who I am. I worry. And, of course, um, I said, well, what are you worrying about? She said, well, I've been having nightmares of my dog dying and my, my mom's dying and my dad's dying and... And I, and, and I have this worry that I'm not a good enough daughter. I said, okay. So, um, so when you're around your dog, what do you do? I just cry when I'm around my dog. I said, so in your mind, the dog's dead, right? Yes. I said, now, if you're the little dog and, and your owner comes to you and they start bawling because you're dead and gone, how would you feel if you were the dog? And, and, and then she's worrying that she's a not good enough daughter. All right. And then I said, well, well okay, somebody's going to die. What's, what is your, what's the big deal? Well, I have this fear I'm going to be alone, and they may not think I was a good daughter. And I said, okay, here it is. Let's say you're the mother, and you have this daughter in the bedroom, and she's got this horrible headache, and she's miserable and upset and all this stuff. What kind of daughter would she be? I mean, would you be making her feel good? Would you be doing things to help your mom feel like she's a good mom? 
Well, no, because I'd be in there worrying and creating these problems. I said, here's the interesting thing. What you fear drives your bus. And see, so here's the crazy. If you don't want, if, if you don't want to be a bad daughter, but you keep focusing on how bad you are, how good of a daughter would you be? Not very good, would it? 